and Shalom. I want to give all praises unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. To all honors to all apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And much love to you, Aki. I'm pushing this word in all sincerity and in truth. Your brothers are up. Another lesson. Just want to get right to it, man. Um, you know, we're in Babylon and it's just getting worse and worse. So we got to make sure that we don't get comfortable and we continuously be sober and watch. Okay, this is Micah 2 and 10. It says, Arise ye and depart. For this is not your rest, because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. Because if you stay in this world, and you get all consumed with what's going on here, man, it's going to lead to your destruction. Because the Heavenly Father is not dealing with this world, man. This world is completely subject unto Satan. Complete madness goes on here, utter um, disorder, and just complete... Um, other satanism man and this world is just getting worse and worse and worse so as you know yasha allah princes of the power man we have to arise and depart man firstly in our mind baptize your mind in the spirit you know the um rakakudash and and renew yourself and get out there and actually do the works of yahabashim yahushai or else man you're gonna be you're gonna be left for destruction you know, this is First Peter 1 and 13. It says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahweh Shai, Mashiach. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Exactly. Times It's the time where it's time to gird up you know, be sober and watch, you know, because that time is coming near, man, where Yahweh Shai Mashiach is going to be revealed as, you know, as um, prophesied in the book of Revelation, coming back in those clouds, you know, and this is a it's high time, man, to seek the Lord even more, you know, now that we have that grace period, this is what we're supposed to be doing, you know, it says, but as he which had called you is holy, so ye be holy in all manner of conversation. So we got to constantly, you know, make sure that we're talking about spiritual things. You know, we're, we're constantly keeping our minds in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Constantly provoking brothers unto good works. You know, constantly hastening the day so that we can get the hell up out of Babylon, man. You know, and I'll show a couple clips and a couple um, articles as to, to why, you know, this is so, so important. Because this place is utterly wicked, man. And nothing that they do is in line with the Heavenly Father. Now, this is a big movement that's being pushed right now. This whole Me Too movement. And as you see, there's a bunch of, of, of stupid broads just walking yelling all types of dumb shit like you know feminism is, is is for for everyone and you know me too and women's rights you know and they have a picture here of of the, well this is really an idol okay this is not to have the um yahweh shai's mother this is not what she would look like the all the, uh, the people of the scriptures all the israelites were people of color brown skin dark brown skin like yahweh shai was as it was revealed in revelations the first chapter okay so this here is just an idol and this goes back to what queen of heaven worship man and that's what's coming right back here on the earth it's the same thing why would we want to be around this and around this complete madness man you know you look here again here it is oprah winfrey talking utter madness man and i'll play a little bit of this clip but this is what this world is promoting this is what they're into it's all satanism it's all adverse to the heavenly father they put they play no respect um they play salakia no respect on the heavenly father's name or what he stands for they're completely adverse to that you should know too in 1944 Reese taylor was a young wife and a mother she was just walking home from a church service she attended in Abbeville, Alabama, when she was abducted by six armed white men, raped and left blindfolded by the side of the road, coming home from church. 
She lived, as we all have lived, too many years in a culture broken by brutally powerful men. For too long, women have not been heard or believed if they dared to speak their truth to the power of those men. But their time is up. Look at the smile on that demon's face when she said that, you know? But their time is up. So what what and they after this speech that this um this bitch Oprah give at the Golden Globes, they're saying that she should be the next president, man. That's what they're pushing now. Now this whole homosexual, transgender, this whole movement is is just pushing more and more of a satanic vibration on uh, on, on, on this earth, man. That's why the earth has to be destroyed by thermal nuclear fire. Okay? And then also by the, the chariots of the Lord, man, because this place is utterly wicked. And here's Eve soaking up and enjoying that complete madness that she's being fed, man. Okay? By the so-called white man. Why would we want to be in this world, man? Arise and depart, because this is not our rest, man. This is their agenda. Me too. The future is female. Well, we know that's not true, okay? The future is Yasha'ah. The future is the kingdom of heaven. The future is Yahawashai reigning on the earth as the supreme ruler, man. And it's, everything's going to be in its perfect order. Not this madness that they're pushing out here, man. This whole feminist, effeminate, faggot vibration. That's completely adverse to the Heavenly Father. Okay, and all it's doing is poisoning what not what it's doing it's what it has already done. It has poisoned our woman to a point of no return. Okay, and there may be out there a few sincere aquat men, but for the most part, you know, there ain't no there ain't no there ain't no righteous woman in this in this wicked world, man. Straight up and down. Okay, and this is these are things that these people were doing. You know, stuff like this. Way back when, and I give an account of that in the book of Judges. Okay? It says, this is Judges 2 and 12. And they forsook the Lord, Yahweh of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed unto other gods, of the gods of the people that were round about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord, Yahweh to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtoreth. Okay? Now let's look into that, man. Baal and Ashtoreth. And these are, this, this is why the, the um, Jeremiah prophesied, you know, that, hey, man, be not um, dismayed by the signs of heaven, man. Because the heathen are dismayed of them. And don't follow on to the ways of the heathen. Because this is what the heathen does, man. Ashtoreth, the star... A false goddess. See, a false goddess. Relate, usually related to a fertility cult. And that's exactly what these women are pushing out here, man. That queen of heaven. That that fertility, fertility cult. That culture of where a woman can, you know, my body, my choice. Could do whatever the hell she wants to do, man. And be a whore. And be a slut and a freak. And has no, you know, um, repercussions for that, man. And that's, we all know, that's not how it's supposed to be. Now, when you look up um, Queen of Heaven, man, you see? It's the Queen of Heaven was a title given to a number of ancient sky goddesses worshipped throughout the ancient Mediterranean and Near East during ancient times. So... Goddesses known to have been referred to by the title including Inanna, Inanna, Salakia, Anat, Isis, Astarte, Hera, and possibly Asherah. You know, and all of these things, man, are, are things that was done back, you know, back in those times, back, way back. All people been doing these, all this wickedness, man. This is nothing new. It's nothing new under the sun. Okay, this is First um, First Samuel 
two, 12 and 10. It says, And they cried unto the Lord and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord and have served Balaam and Ashtoreth. And let's see if I can find Ashtoreth. Because this is the same the same thing coming back. It's nothing new. This, these people are not doing anything new, man. They still being wicked in the sight of the Lord. See, and all these things are, are idols, man. And it's nothing. When you look at, at, at the, um, the images for these things that they pull up, look, it's all satanic. It's all pagan. And this is one of the main vessels that they use, the so-called black woman. You know, and they raise her up, you know, this demon here, Beyonce, man. And she got all our women in that wicked ass spirit of worshiping and giving reverence unto the woman. So I'll read, this is Isaiah 65, 2. It says, I have spread out my hands all day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts, a people that provoked me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificed it in gardens and burned incense upon altars of brick, which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments which eat swine's flesh and brought of abominable things in is in their vessels, which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are smoke, these are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all day. So the Mosai is completely angry at, at our people, man. You know? And that's why two thirds of the nation of Israel has to be put to death right here in Babylon man because they have they have gone to a point of no return okay so all is left for them to be um for them is destruction okay it's another example of the children of Israel going off this is Acts 7 and 40 it says saying unto Aaron make us gods to go before us for as for this Moses which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we what not what is become of him. So once again, no patience, no faith, and this wanted instant gratification, man, being a wicked. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. You see? So there's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but therein is the, is the ways of death, man. And this is what our people are into today. Still worshipping Christmas, which goes back to what? Saturnalia, sun worship, okay? Into to, to worshipping Baal and the, 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 having the tree bowing down and sacrificing their kids and doing all these things, man, joyfully. Okay, it says, Then the Yahweh turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Mola, and the star of the young Remphran, figures which he made to worship them. And I will carry you away beyond Babylon. So it's the same, same people doing the same things. 
Remfren, who let's check this out. The name of an idol worshipped secretly by the Israelites in the wilderness. Idols, man, and our people are continuously look. Name of Satan. Christmas, Saturnalia. You know? And it's 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 just annoying. It's vexing. You know? For for men that are actually trying to do the right thing. So that's why, you know, it's time to gird up our loins, man, and do this work and pray sincerely unto the Heavenly Father so that he can send Yahweh Shai back, man, to get us out of this. Because Babylon is getting worse and worse and harder and harder for true men of the Lord to, to live in, man. You know, but, you know, we, we're going to keep pushing, keep having faith, and keep building our faith up so that we can counteract all these demons that's out here, man. And wait patiently, you know, and strive for this truth unto death. All right. Uh, the thing is, everything that these people push out is completely, it's just madness, man. Now listen, listen to this, this, this nonsense. Now they, they push for women's rights and women's liberation. You know, and they, they, they all want to just have a woman to assert authority over a man. But really, what they want to do is just be slut freaks and hoes without any um, repercussions. She's Gotta Have It made its Netflix debut recently, and the main character, Nola Darling, has a lot, a lot of people talking. Nola considers herself a sex-positive, polyamorous, pansexual, ooh, that was tongue, tongue twister, <laughs> which basically means she does whatever she wants with whoever she wants sexually. In the series, Nola is openly dating three different men at the same damn time. Panelists, what are your thoughts? Is Nola Darling's sexuality too much, or is it unapologetic black female sexuality at its best? Okay, Slater Shay. In three, two, one. Here we go. Slayed all the way. Okay, for anyone who says it's too much, I don't know. It really should not be a revolution to see a black woman owning her body. I feel like Nola Darling is so important in this era because this is one of the few times we see a black woman that is sexual and not sexualized. The latter part meaning that her body isn't here for male consumption. You know what I mean? It's not here to be on a leash of someone else. So I like that she's owning everything. And I like that as black women, we are seeing like a full kaleidoscope of ourselves on television like we are not unidimensional there isn't the soul light i mean what the fuck are these people talking about man leviticus 19 and 29 do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. And hey man, that's exactly what has happened. That's exactly what's going on. And that's exactly why the Heavenly Father gave us laws to prevent this, man. Not to have our woman out here on the TV and on Instagram and Facebook shaking their ass. You know, just being complete cum buckets. And just running off of the top of their mouth, man. That's not how that's not how the Lord set this up. It says they shall Salakia, Leviticus 21 and 7, they shall not take a wife that is a whore or profane. Neither shall they take a woman put away from her husband, for he is holy unto the most high. Leviticus 21 and 9. And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profaneth her father. She shall be burnt with fire. It's a very, very serious thing, man. To be a whore. And the Heavenly Father. That's the reason why these things are written. Because as we see, when you allow these women to go about and do whatever they want, man. The place just becomes full of wickedness. Deuteronomy 23 and 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. 
and this nigga on the couch, man, he's a goddamn sodomite, man. You know? He's up here. Look at this faggot. Slade. Slade meaning they're all in agreement of this woman having three different men dealing with them and she's being, you know, sexual and unsexualized. The fuck? Man, this, everything's supposed to be in order, man. This is 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Yahweh Shai. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Yahweh Shai is God. See? Four, eleven, and 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. So, there's an order for things, man. There's a reason why a woman was created for a man, for, her, for his comfort. Now, can a man have more than one woman? Yes. Is that wrong biblically? No. But he has to provide equally and show love equally to all his women, man. And that's the problem that your women have. Because y'all are carnal, and y'all are just... That's why y'all supposed to be under the order of a man. So that y'all remain in order, man. And not be a freaking slut and a whore out here. Which all of y'all are. Sadly to say, but that's what it is. But it's all prophecy, man. So it's all good. We're gonna get our woman back in our kingdom, man. So that's why we gotta be, you know, in, 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 a, in the spirit of hastening that day, man. Because this thing is, is ridiculously wicked, man. Ridiculously wicked. Now, for all these women out here that wants to come up and say, well, why y'all could have two women and why y'all could... Because thus saith the Lord. Now, this Genesis 29, I'm going to read, is a story... Where we all come from, man. The 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Genesis 29 and 6. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel his daughter cometh with the sheep. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day. Neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water he the sheep and go and feed them. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll drop down. It says, and it came to pass, 29 and 10, when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled a stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother. And that he was Rebekah's son, and she ran and told her father. And it came to pass, when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob's his sister's son, that he ran to meet him, and embraced him, and kissed him, and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender eye, but Rachel was beautiful and well favored. And Jacob loved Rachel, and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better I gave her to thee than I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him, and he went in unto her. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpah, 
is made for and hard handmade. So this is the story, man. You know, he went in. You know, Laban gave Jacob Leah. He wanted Rachel, but he gave her Leah because it will, as you read on, it will tell you. Okay, it says, and it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, what is this thou hast done unto me, that I serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore thou hast thou beguiled me? Because he loved Rachel. But he gave it Leah. Why? It goes back to our customs. And Laban said, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. So because Leah was the older of his daughters, that's why he gave it gave her first and in those seven years when he was working man I guarantee Leah and Rachel wasn't going out to the lounges smoking hookah blowing face blowing um smoke in their phones okay sleeping with a whole different a whole bunch of different men sucking and 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 and, 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 and um, fucking as they want man that's being smuts and also as a um our culture, you had to go to that woman's father, man. It wasn't that you met her out somewhere. You take her home, you have sex with her. That's your girlfriend. And then you meet her father two, three, four weeks or whenever. Or if you ever meet her father, man. That's not how it goes. And you bow down to her and ask her for her, for her hand in marriage. No, you ask her father, man. She was the property of her father. Hence why women carries their father's last name. And when they get married... Their names change to their husband's last name to now show that he's he takes ownership and he takes responsibility for that woman, man, which is a very heavy, heavy responsibility. Okay, it says, "Fulfill her week, and I will give thee also for the service which thou shalt serve with me. Yet serve other years, yet seven other years, Salakia." And Jacob did so and fulfill her week. And gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. So he had Leah and Rachel. And Laban gave to Rachel, his daughter, Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her maid. And he went in also unto Rachel. And he loved also Rachel more than Leah. And served with, served with yet seven other years. See? And that was wrong. He shouldn't. He's supposed to have... You know, love for the both of them. But the point is, there is nothing wrong. Because here's the Lord. 2931. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. So they did say, well, when the Lord saw that Jacob had two women, he came in and he, 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 he had a problem with that. No, when he saw that he was showing favor more to one than the other. That's what he did. He, he closed up her womb and he allowed um, Leah to have kids, man. And Rachel Nut. Because that was that was a very um, noble thing and a very, you know, respected thing for a woman to be a children for unto her husband, man. And Leah conceived and bare a son and called his name Reuben, which is the firstborn of the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. So, from the very inception, man, woman, the, our whole nation of people come from a man that had multiple women. So, what the hell is all this feminist bullshit? Y'all are dealing up in Satanism, man. Point blank, period. If you're a feminist, you're a Satanist. It says... Surely the Lord, Yahweh, had looked upon my affliction. And that's what his name means. My affliction heard. Rabawan. Now therefore my husband will love me. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Because the Lord had heard that I was hated, he had therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, No, this time will my husband be joined unto me. Because I have borne him three sons before his before was his name called Levi. And when you read on, man, Jacob actually had kids with with the um the handmaids as well. So he had four women out of this these two that he got from um from Laban. So what is this madness about, man? This is all 
about pushing uh, a vibration out here that is adverse to the Heavenly Father. You know, keeping us away from who we really are. All of this madness here. All of this wickedness here. And I got to stop, man. So, I get one more scripture and close it out. You know, I want to push this um too long. This is um What's going on here, man? This is Romans 13 and 11. It says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. So, knowing that this is the time, man, brothers, you know, continue to push. Let's get out of here. Get out of all this wickedness that, you know, that's going on in America. Let's get away, you know, and, and, and let's, let's bring righteousness back on the earth, man, you know under the the um the order of Yahweh Shai, you know, and, and his the, the apostles, disciples and all the true men of the Lord, man. You know, and let's let's just rid ourselves of all this wickedness, man. Okay, so with that I wanna give all praises unto Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Waha Kodash Raka, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and much love to all you Akim pushing this word in all sincerity and in truth. Shalom.